Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm, I'm Ed Piscor. And I'm Tom Scholey. We're going to be looking at a, uh, the mail that has come in in the last couple of weeks here on Cartoonist Kayfabe. Before we dive into this stack of mail, Ed, tell us about Red Room. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics, man. Every issue completely self-contained. Get it put on your pool list at your local comic shop. This is the free comic book day issue. Going to come out uh, August 14th of 2021 get your hands on this thing completely original material 33 pages of fresh comics uh the best comic that i've made to date uh you can order and pre-order these comics at uh the fantagraphics website if you don't have yeah nice color one <laughs> uh if you don't have a uh, comic shop near you or you could hit up my patreon patreon.com slash ed piscor three books get you the archive there and you can read all of my comics uh, before they hit uh paper I always like to show off some of this stuff. <laughs> family, this family is one comics. of my favorite yeah. panels oh. ever, so I'd like to get that one in there. Tom, where can people find more of your comics? Um, here's Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics from 10 Speed Press. It's the story of Jack Kirby's life told in comic book form with narration uh, from Jack Kirby. I also did a uh, companion piece to this called Fantastic Four Grand Design, where it's kind of like a Kirby-centric tour through the Fantastic Four's history. And um, I also am doing new comics on Patreon. Just uh, check, uh, search Tom Scholey at patreon.com. And I also do a, a YouTube channel called Total Recall Show. You can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download out-of-print zines and mini-comics like this Street Angel sketchbook from 2013. I have about a dozen of these downloads available. You can see a lot of my original art. You can see process, scripts, uh, layouts, how I make the comics that I make on patreon.com slash jimrug. And it occurs to me that I might move this stack to the side uh, just to make this a little bit easier viewing as we go through here. And uh, where possible, I will include notes where you can track down uh, the creators of these books or where you can find these books. First one up is Dishoom by Sam J. Royal came in an envelope with original art on the cover, which is always uh, kind of a nice trick. Sam is somebody that we probably, the first time we looked at on this channel was in the Image Grand Design. He was one of the contributors to that, that we uh, sung some of his praises. And I feel like this is a really impressive mini comic in that you're getting all of these different approaches to yeah. comics creation. Uh, pretty nice color That's work cool. in here and pretty nice production values for a mini comic and quite a substantial piece along with the promise of another issue. So a series in the making here, uh, showing off a very polished, I think, and uh, pretty advanced image maker. At Sam J. Royal is where you can find more of his work. The Dark Prince of Outlaw Comics. Yes. Tim Tyler, uh, currently running a Kickstarter, does a lot of self-publishing. We've talked about him a little bit in the past because Tim Tyler is an outlaw cartoonist that goes back to the 80s, a collaborator with Tim Vigil. Uh, the Joe Kubert School, I don't know if he graduated, if that makes him an alumni or not. He may have graduated, I really don't know, but definitely did a stint at the Joe Kubert School in the 80s, uh, went on to do black and white indie comics, and then starts self-publishing in the early 90s and has continued to this day to self-publish and to run these Kickstarter campaigns. Currently what is up is Grail Book 2. Give you some idea of what this looks like a big, heavy, heavy-duty, oversized comics magazine collection by him. I'd like to see him bring back uh, Ravage, the guy with the chainsaw hand. Yeah, you know what? I almost pulled a bunch of his self-published work like that yeah. uh, for Blood this rain. thing. At some point, maybe we'll do a profile and pull out some of those comics, because a fairly prolific creator and, uh, you know, an ink slinger. Blood Rain, uh, Pyramid Comics. Yes. Zero Tolerance, Color with Tim Vigil and the guy who draws uh, Fat Ninja. So it's three <laughs> three uh, homeworks of uh, Outlaw Comics and one co color comic. And this is High Speed Fucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his stuff is definitely Outlaw, and it's kind of like exploitation movies. You know, like a lot of the, the recent things, if you look through them, they're almost like uh, going to the drive-in, you know, that mm -hmm. flavor of movies, uh, which is pretty entertaining for comics, especially the kind of stuff that I like. Yeah, that was like a Famous Monsters of Filmland uh, pastiche. Gotta have some wrestling comics. Feels like every time we get a new mailbag, Ed, they send us a couple of wrestling comics. This one was pretty cool. Uh, I like their note. This is uh, from Los big fans out in the Los Angeles area. So you see a list of creators on this comic. And uh, obviously, Luchador's your title. 
a reference to the masked wrestlers that we associate with Mexican wrestling, and uh, a pretty nice looking comic. There's your title character, Luchador. He's here as like muscle on a uh, some kind of nefarious deal that's going down in the middle of the night with a ninja-like vigilante on a motorcycle. It's all in here. It's like they made the comic for me, right? <laughs> Um, I don't have the social media uh, contact info for them, but here are your creators, writer, and artist, and Last Bastion Studios is the, uh, I guess, their collective name. So if you're into wrestling comics or luchador comics or stories, definitely something to uh, check out. Very polished effort. Uh, I'm very impressed by this whole package. I feel like it looks pretty good, printed well, so good work on that one. You know what we need, Jim? More wrestling comics. <laughs> well, you're in luck, Ed. Because here is Heel Turn, number one, and you can follow them at It's a Heel Turn. Uh, this was a comic that a couple people had recommended to me and that I almost tracked down on my own, but opened up an envelope and there it was. This is a... Uh, Jim Cornette would hate this comic and the wrestling that's in it. This is... Is it a dirt sheet? It gets into the nitty gritty? <laughs> it doesn't get into the nitty gritty exactly, but it is definitely outlaw mud show violence. Oh, uh, oh like... Uh... Like uh, deathmatch stuff. Exactly, yeah. deathmatch stuff. Exactly. Uh, the main title character, this Jack character, and I don't know if that's an homage to Cactus Jack, but he is just completely out of control and threatening in a way this entire wrestling organization that he joins up. Uh, it's kind of kayfabe. There isn't a lot of the behind the scenes, except mm -hmm. the promoters are sort of concerned about him. But then the factions that are inside and coming for him, you know, there's no. Uh, they don't look like they're working together. Right, they don't go out to the diner afterwards. Exactly. No, they meet in the hospital and break each other's arms there. You know... Look at that color. When you, when you have a good death match, uh, you know, going down, you can't really fake a pizza cutter to a guy's lips. Yeah, that's not what you're getting in this comic, by the way. <laughs> that is uh, That is not the pizza cutter to the lips. But kind of a cool comic, and I assume there's a series here, so it's a heel turn. Happy to add that one to my box of gimmicks. You guys talk about my love of 90s comics. Well, this is uh, playing on that love. Follow them at a Kiwi and Kiwi Clothing, but these are your writers and artists. Uh, two issues of this so far. They actually sent us several of their comics. This black and white one is really nice, but my interest is definitely in the 90s, and it's kind of cool that we live in an era where you can do color comics, because if you really wanted to do a 90s-esque kind of comic, uh, at least an image-esque kind yeah. of comic, you'd have a hard time doing it if you couldn't do the color. So uh, this is definitely... You'd have to do an ash can. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's a swipe right out of an X-Force cover there. Yeah, I'm in um, the six-pack. <laughs> Very, very uh, inside, uh, right up my alley, let's say. I think I saw Zordon a little bit earlier. Got a de Deadpool kind of guy. Yeah, I mean, this stuff, clearly a nod to Extreme Studios and the art that was coming out of that. Pretty fun. They also included in their uh, in their letter a 90s-style rendition of the cartoonist kayfabe team. Doesn't hurt to include some artwork in the uh, packages that you send this way. We do accept payola. <laughs> it's, not, it's not against the law. Absolutely. Kevin Delgado, Tough Stuff. This was a Kickstarter. One of my favorite parts of this is uh, this is a guy who did this during the lockdown. You know, make use of that quarantine time that we all had. And this is, I guess, the Kickstarter package that would come out. So you get the note that goes with that. Reminds me a lot of my Octobriana. And uh, he describes this as an outlaw comic. I wasn't sure about that. You know, I thought this might go into my cat comics <sighs> files until I started going through it and yeah. seeing some of the... Uh, the artwork and the homages that are inside of this, very image-esque, the way he handles the, uh, <laughs> the reporters on screen. <laughs> but they're quite, take, you know, extinguishing the cigarette on his tongue to prove how tough he is. And there were a couple of, uh, I'll call them homages, that I thought were worth pointing out here um, to give some context. There you go, your title character, kind of the cover image a little bit of the outlaw qualities that he talks a about. to the old ultra-violence. Nobody's going to complain about that here. I like the fake ad, Demolition Man with Whoopi Goldberg. You guys, <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember that great that great movie? It's on the Phoenix. The John Byrne Wolverine uh, famous image yeah, there. Yeah, the sewer, sewer drawing. So fun layouts, fun art. Again, this is another one that I think benefits from the color, being able to you know, print this in color I think is a big plus, having the guts cut open. Oh, dude, and look at the little fat beads. <laughs> Yeah, how about that for a detail? If you ever have a nice gash bed, you, you know what that looks like. And then chucking him off the uh, rooftop while his guts are all f spilling out. So, pretty fun. 
And uh, this particular set that he sent has uh, several variations of this, like a oh, uh, nice foil. metal, he, he, metal foil. He, you want to do 90s. He met stretch goals, it looks like. Yes, and uh, another one of those homage covers there. And a black and white edition, which uh got to think is a little bit of a nod towards my Octobriana Kickstarter that had the uh, the black and white edition as well. Pretty fun stuff. Not sure whether that's going to get filed with the Cat Comics or not, but I love the packaging that it comes in. And this is printed. We've seen these kind of boxes where people do like painting on the cover or something. This is actually a custom printed box. So uh, you guys watching at home, if you're making your own comics, that's kind of a neat package. Shout out to Strange Adventures in Halifax, the great comic book shop up north. Uh, we got to spend some time there and visit. He sent us a big package of zines and comics. I'm sure a few of those are going to make it onto this channel at some point in, uh, in more in-depth videos, but I wanted to highlight some of the zines that he sent. I love this stuff to begin with, and he sent us a bunch from the early 70s and also labeled them with some notes about what's significant here. What are we looking for? Underground Comics busted in Montreal 1972. This is fantastic stuff, man. You talk about, I mean, this is pre-comics yeah, journal or anything. I love it. This issue, uh, there were a few of these George zines that he sent along. This particular issue, it's all contemporary zines. This is like from 1970 and running down like reviews of other comics zines. A zine about zines. Now you're talking. Definitely, because like how else do you even find this stuff? I had no idea, one, that there were this many zines coming out in 1970 about comics, let alone somebody cataloging them. George is obsessive. We, yes, we, he we, definitely is. We found that out. <laughs> uh, these are anthologies of cartoonists, I think mostly local cartoonists, that Strange Adventures published. Um, kind of flip through, showcase some of those things. This is stuff that we have seen this kind of thing before. Um, Tom, one of your early... Uh, you were in an anthology this size early on, yeah, and I yeah. feel like that was centered around some of the Pittsburgh comic shops. Exactly. Yeah, that that was a format, like sort of a, like a standard format for like yeah, just if you were going to put something together, it's it's convenient paper for a Xerox machine. Yeah, and it's and where are you going to find your other contributors at the local comic shop? Right. This is the early '90s, the uh, Strange Adventure stuff. So you know, you you see those. Uh, references to what was going on in those early 90s it also speaks to cow and uh, strange adventures history like they've been operating for uh for quite a while now at this point a really good store and they do mail order so if you uh if you track down old comics or rare comics um definitely a store worth giving a follow on social media i've gotten a few pieces from them over time uh, including so many purpose the very hard to find brennan mccarthy anthology that was called Codex Pop, if anybody was looking for it, my my version of, of that. Hopefully we'll take a look at that on here one of these days, Tom. You never know. Shaky Kane and Krent Abel put together this image book. This is a new release, Kane and Abel. Uh, Ed, I saw this first because you picked it up at the comic shop. I have not gotten hold of one. Krent Abel sent us a copy. So the, the uh, half of this collaboration, I was delighted to open this up, personalized it to us. Um, this is a really interesting comic. Oversized, square bound, 72 pages, and just two very good cartoonists, um, you know, doing a, a two person anthology, essentially. So, this first story here, Shaky Kane. If you're a Shaky Kane fan, you certainly will recognize his art style here. Krent Abel is somebody whose name I did not recognize. Um, this is probably his art, maybe. I mean, I, it might be Shaky Kane. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is breaking kayfabe, but is Krent Abel one of Shaky Kane's aliases, characters that he, he, he portrays from time to time? I don't think he is. I think his actual... Well, I don't want to give away too much about okay. his real identity, but I think that that's a, uh, a pen name that he operates under, but I don't think it's Shaky Kane. So this is Krent Abel's first story in here, and you can see it's it, it looks pretty different to me than anything I've seen Shaky Kane do. And it's pretty badass looking. He also has, uh, they both do a couple of stories in this, and this might be something that we look at in greater depth, not sure, but um, I think it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks pretty fun. Giant hand with monsters on your fingertips. Nice design. And then there's like a uh, monster truck story. You know, it's this is one of those books you start flipping through it and it's hard not to stop on every page because they do look really good. I like seeing shaky cane art shown in different ways. Like there was a pencil page earlier. Here's a black and white page. But this is another Krent Abel story. Monster truck, man. You know, Creeps again, out. doing this one for me. Love that driver and his skull mask. Even like the color, like this whole thing looks really good. 
I am unfamiliar with him as a cartoonist, so I don't know if he has a lot of other comics under his belt. He might be a uh, multimedia artist and might be doing comics as, uh, you know, like maybe new to comics and working in other media. I'm under the impression that he's definitely an artist um, that has some history, but I don't know it in comics. He's secretly, but I like this character. He's secretly Banksy. <laughs> <laughs> Could be, man. It seems like Banksy's a lot closer to the UK comic scene than I had realized. But uh, pretty nice looking art. And this is a new one from Image. So if you're watching this at home and you're interested in this, you can track that down at a good comic shop. You can follow Crent Abel there at Crent Abel. Ed. Birthday present. Happy birthday from, from comics Jeet historian here. Jeet here. Do you guys know this? Have you ever heard of How to Draw Buzz Sawyer in Bende? I do know. By Roy Crane. What? He created this thing for his assistant oh, to kind of teach him how to do it. This is one of the most incredible that's documents amazing. I've ever seen. Uh, Jeet asked me to plug the Buzz Sawyer reprints that Fanographics does and the uh, Captain Easy reprints. They, they need all the help they can get. Those are great volumes, by the way. Right. And not some of, not some big of these names things, and uh, comics. Though, you know, yeah. Some of these things aren't uh, don't sell that well, so you know, yeah, check no those Popeye. out. But if you look at a couple of these pages as we flip through, I don't think I'll have to twist anyone's arm to go look at, at more Roy Crane art. And uh, this is incredible. It's I don't know how well it'll show up here, but there are notes from Crane basically talking about his ideas on composition. He refers to these grays as color. So he's working in black and white and gray. This is some kind of craft tint paper, yeah. you know, basically duo shade, because you can see it's drawn. Like, that's not cut out, you know, like a screen tone or anything. Yeah, no, I mean, he's the guy. Like, when we did our duo tone episode and we were going through the great duo tone comics, like, there were people who were saying, like, I am shutting this off if you don't have <laughs> some Buzz Sawyer or huh? just Roy Crane in general. Dude, this is incredible. So the reason for Ben Day, uh, you know, pulling out certain panels and then having his notes on these things... But he gets into like how he uses white in the way white should mm -hmm. work, like a color. Man, it's phenomenal. Go back one, like the the, the old maxim, dude. The, the way that everybody was taught, man. The yes. picture must first be good in black and white. Yeah, That's I have rule, only man. one rule for Ben Day's use: first make the picture good in black and white. It's so it's so interesting because he goes through and he'll have examples and he'll say this is to create interest. This is to control the eye. This is because these other panels are like this. You know, and he says, use it to draw with in place of ink, if you like, which is, you know, the proof that this is some sort of chemical uh, mm -hmm. reaction on the paper, like a duo shade. Of course, now, you know, we would do that probably digitally very easily. You could also do it with ink washes. You know, the concept here is the gray and yeah. how that interacts with your black and white. Um, but man, this document's amazing. So like I was messaging with Jeet about this, found it in Syracuse. Uh, you know, that's where I guess all of Roy Crane's papers and everything are stored. Um, I mentioned he's a, a comics historian, so doing research in their archives comes across this. Some of this has been reprinted in different places. Cartoonist Profile reprinted a few pages from this. The Comics Journal number 302 uh, reprinted a chunk of this at a reduced size. So, you know, that's... You get the good set here, Ed. But look at these panels. As I was looking through this, it's, it reminds me so much of Toth. Yeah. yeah. The ability to compose interesting panels. Um, you know, and, and like, he talks about what's the important part of this panel, and then how do you achieve that in some sort of composition. Look at, like, all the thought that goes into this stuff, and this guy had to do these strips every day. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, man, this is taking me back just to kind of, like, there's this thing that happens in art school, and frankly, it happened when you and I took that um, screenwriting course, where there's just so much fresh new information in your head that that all I'm able to do is, is spin wheels, and I, yeah. I feel paralyzed yes. uh -huh. to like make a comic. And he's got all this going around in his head while he's putting his strips together every day. These are cool. So the everything strip... The nothing strip. This is draw it as fast as you can because yeah. who cares? Because you want to go uh, out to eat, eat dinner with your wife one day a week or something. Or the next page, you just got to get there. Like this is just the exposition to get to it. Personality, gadgets. Speaking of like, you know, the black, white, gray as like color. Look at how amazing that explosion is. Like really using white there to not only control your interest, but to, to create this scene, this moment. Fill a page with this, this stuff. And then fill a book with that, and you've got a modern superhero comic. It's it's mind blowing. <laughs> like these, you know, 
the level of craft and his ability to compose these pictures is just phenomenal. You don't see very much, uh, you know, you just don't see this level of craft, quite frankly. Yeah, these are hard, most hard earned comics. lessons. And it's just full of his, like, handwriting. Yeah, I don't know how cool this doesn't this, exist, yeah. like, as a, as a nicely produced book, you know, better reproduction. But you take what you can get, and this is just gold. Like, I've been poor. I, this showed up yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so this is all I've been looking at uh, since, since, it, since it arrived. I have it laid out on my dining room table, so anytime I'm passing through, like for coffee or to yeah. do anything, I have to stop and read a couple of pages. Gee, send me a copy too. <laughs> <laughs> Did he go to Syracuse and and, and see this and, and make the copies? Yeah, he has. Um, I think he has an an intro in, uh, or or you know how they have like a lot of extra information in these fanographic archives. I think Jeet writes in the second volume of Buzz Sawyer. I'm going to say is where it's at, but it's about the um, Roy Crane and perfectionist. So very critical of his uh. assistants. Like the reason he put this together was for his assistants, and it's kind of a contentious relationship. And it's documented. It's written about in different places, and that's that's uh, some context for what this document is and why it exists. But I mean, this is comics 101. Like if you internalize the lessons that are on here, you'd be a much better cartoonist. So that's my plan. It's better to suggest something simply than to draw it laboriously. And then he has like examples. So, you know, this guy's picking stuff up, collecting this stuff on the on the shore. That stuff's just suggested. You know, it's uh, not a lot of detail there. The detail's in the figures. So you can see that clearly he's going through the beach and scooping this stuff up. It's just a, a wealth of knowledge. Yeah. You know, it really is. Uh, good, good lessons, man. Good stuff to, to pull for. Like, I, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm reading this stuff and think about all my mistakes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the downside of it. <laughs> but and, and you're kind of in a way, working in this medium, too. So I'm yeah. sure these could directly apply to what, what you're currently working on. And I feel like this may be something that we end up doing a, a more in-depth episode on in the future once we both had time to sit with this and, and really pour over this. Uh, I mean, look at the amount of notes, you know, Roy Crane's notes on this stuff. Yeah. I always, uh, anytime we come across one of these how-to books by a cartoonist, I always comment about how, like, every cartoonist should commit this stuff to mm -hmm. record, you know, show us what you value, show us how yeah. you think about this stuff. You know, like, this is great. Note the second question above. Uh, you know, what on earth is he dropping? Here's the answer, tooled in pictures. Mm. You know, it's the flowers that are coming off of the cart that they're following behind, or the, that the airplane is, is dropping in front of them. Tell your story in pictures whenever possible. Rule number one, make those pictures blindingly clear. Exaggerate. Rule number two. This is this is gold shit yeah. right here, man. This is Wisdom. your master's degree in cartooning right here. Uh, thank you, Jeet. This is this is an amazing, amazing document. I had not seen this. I did not know this existed, despite you know excerpts appearing in a couple of places. I never knew about it, and uh, this is what I'm reading this week. Yeah, super cool, man. Jeet, thank you very much. So, pretty fun mail day. Uh, if you guys want to send us mail, you can find our address, our P.O. box below this video. And uh, I love seeing what everybody makes, man. It's pretty cool to see, you know, from, from Shaky Kane's latest on a professional level to seeing the, the stuff that people are producing on print-on-demand and hand-making these comics themselves. Really kind of, uh, I think we say this every episode, but it really gives me an energy. And I like seeing that survey that comics are being uh participated with created with on all these levels like if you want to make comics there is nothing stopping you at this point every day is christmas at the cartoonist kayfabe studios jim kayfabers like follow subscribe to the youtube channel hit the bell we'll notify you when new vids are available jimmy what's out there join me on patreon.com slash jim rug to see how i make the comics i make lots of original art uh, a dozen out of print hard to find zines and mini comics that you can download uh, patreon.com slash jim rug how to Draw Jack Kirby in Pencil. Check out Jack Kirby, The Epic Life with the King of Comics. Read Fantastic Four Grand Design. Um, check out my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Red Room Comics in the Wild. Uh, two issues as we speak. They come out every four weeks. Uh, every issue is a complete uh, story. Get them while they're hot. You see an issue, grab an issue. Uh, you can order those comics at the Fantagraphics website in my link tree below this video. You can also check out the uh, Patreon and read the comics before they hit paper. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. Three bucks for the archive there. Over 100 pages of strips right now. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Give them those merchandise so we could go take a look at this thingy. Jimmy, we're going to be on our way. Make more comics.